Displaying APRS objects on a map using GQRX, Direwolf and XASTIR by Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. This will be the third video I've recorded today, the 29th of March. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be able to do three videos in one day. Oh well. So this one is GQRX again, uh, except this time uh, something else it can do. Now, as you'll know, I run an APRS eye gate now, uh, call sign MB7UCG, uh, just covering a small area in in Cantrick Garrison, um, and it's uh, working quite well actually, because sometimes it can pick things up from a bit further away. <laughs> So, at the moment, uh, I've got GQRX tuned to the APRS frequencies. Uh, it is decoding. Um, uh, GQRX does actually have a built-in decoder. So, that will show up uh, packets like so. But there's a couple of other things you can actually do with it as well. And I'm going to show you what those things are. So, we'll, I'll go to the computer and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so what we've got here is GQRX. Um, uh, it's currently tuned to the APRS frequency, so it's obviously receiving things from my eye gate, so that's a very strong signal for it, so I had to turn the gain all the way down to zero. So this is stations that it has been receiving over the last few minutes. Now, obviously this doesn't make a lot of sense unless it can be put onto a map, so here's what we need to do. We need to turn on the UDP down here, which I've already done, and then what we need to do I will then bring that window up. I go into this terminal window. There's a piece of software in there called Direwolf. That should be available in your package manager. If it isn't, then it should be available from GitHub as source that you can compile. There should be instructions on how to do that on there. I won't go into that right now because you can just use the package manager version of this. It's perfectly fine. It might complain about no configuration file at startup, but don't worry too much about that. There is a specific way we need to start this, and I'll show you. So I've got to close it first, so I'll show you how to do that. Now, the command here is this command. I'll put that in the description for the video. So if I press that, that will then take everything back through. It will have given me an error on the next one we need to look at. So if I go into the next one, which is that one, that's our little mapping software. Now it's given me an error there, so I'll just restart that. So there we go, so that's now restarted. I'll just show you how that's configured. So if I go into properties for that one, that one it's configured in this manner. So the host would be 127.0.0.0.1. The port would be 8000. Comment, you can leave blank. Passcode, you can leave blank. Reconnect on net failure, that's an optional one. You can either turn that one on or off. You don't necessarily have to have that on. Transmit radio port, just leave that as it is. Eye gate options, just keep that disabled. And just don't bother changing these because we're not doing anything with respect to the eye gate. So I'm not going to press OK, I'm just going to press cancel. To be able to add this, what you need to do is you need to press add. I'll just bring that forward and it is networked AGWPE press add again it will bring up a dialog very similar to what I've just shown you we're not going to fill that in because everything's all done and then you would um, uh, if it isn't already started up that's when you would then press start so the moment it is started up but you would press start anyway if it if it wasn't started so that's um, uh, showing everything on here so we've got a station there I've got that's an object we've got some stations here we've got another station there we've got something just up there look <laughs> I'm not sure if that's actually supposed to be there but might might be might not be we've got another another item there or object so, yeah, it shows you things on the map, rather than you're looking at um, uh, lots of what looks like a lot of code. So, 
perfectly perfectly legal to do this because it is an amateur radio radio frequency that you're listening on so rather than looking at these sorts of things here if you you can then do is you can just see it all on a map so it doesn't matter whether the whether the station is an iGate, a Digipeter or just another APRS transmitting station which could be just an amateur radio operator in their car or with a handheld for example, I can hopefully. Oh, I heard that come through the through the headphones. Actually, <laughs> that was a bit concerning. So that's probably broken the GQRX. Uh, no, it hasn't actually. Surprisingly. Uh, hmm, let's try that again. Hmm. That didn't transmit. It did that time. So, if I go back to the map, it'll show my handheld on the map there, and there's obviously shows other objects there. So that makes more sense. Like I said, then then it does that. So I'm hoping that's been helpful. So we'll go back to the camera and finish the video off. Okay, so that's just a basic overview of how to decode APRS packets and put them on a map using a Linux system. This machine's running a Debian, um, so it might not look the same on your system. It might look different. It will definitely look different on a Raspberry Pi because uh, the Raspberry Pi operating system, uh, I think it has its own um, uh, <laughs> user interface. Uh, but otherwise, the principles are pretty much the same. So, GQRX you can install from the package manager. Direwolf you can either install from the package manager or download from GitHub and compile from source. It's not available in, in all uh, distribution package managers as far as I'm aware. Uh, and uh, XASTIR is available in the package manager as well. And that's the mapping software we used here. Uh, I believe it should work in a within a local network to Windows machines as well to display the information on APRS IS32, which is the APRS application for Windows that I I use when I'm using the tablet in the car with the FTM400. So that tends to be what I use there. So so I think it should work because it should just so it should just go from one computer in the network to the other provided the, the firewall settings are not going to interfere with that I've not tried that so don't quote me on that whether that works or not so yeah so I run I run the iGate MB7 UCG Mike Bravo 7 Uniform Charlie Golf which is a Catrick Garrison APRS iGate um, I do run beacons either when I'm using the, this handheld because this is the only one that, that I've got that has APRS built into it or when I'm driving with the mobile with the FTM 400 so hope that might have been of some interest to you this is like I say it's the third video I've actually filmed today the 29th of March so it's uh, <laughs> it's quite interesting if you want to use APRS and you're local to me your packets will get get go through MB7 UCG um, and you only need um, in the UK a foundation license to be able to use it 10 watts of 10 watts of power is enough so if you're interested in getting your foundation license and APRS is something you would like to have a go with once you've passed passed the exam then yeah maybe I look forward to seeing some M7s um, in the local area with with packets coming coming through my eye gate very soon that would be quite nice actually so Seven threes for now. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or Two Six Charlie Tango Seven Three Zero. If you catch me on eleven meters in PMR Four Four Six, so three videos in one day. <laughs> that actually has surprised me. Seven three for now, guys. <laughs>